on today's show, we're going to reveal Mike's running back prospect rankings. And Mike is also going to give us his best NFL comp for each of these prospects. Let's get started here with Renner's running back seven on his big board. It is Marshawn Lloyd out of USC. 5'9", 220, ran a 4'4'6". Now, injury, I think, is a concern here. Tore his ACL back in 2020. has missed, missed time each of the last two years with injury. Renner, what do you think about Marshawn Lloyd's NFL outlook? Yeah, we can't even really go seven deep of guys that I for sure think will be top three rounders. Like I, I would guess a guy that we're going to talk about here will fall at day three. It's just not a good class. I don't think Lloyd's that guy though, just because he's physically gifted. Um, you see, you saw it back in South Carolina before he transferred to USC. He has unique movement skills for a guy that's two hundred and twenty pounds. You know, he is a big back that can not only make you miss but can catch out of the backfield that it can really, you know, has a modern space running back skill set. And that is just tough to pin down uh, one-on-one. Uh, the confirms DeAndre Swift. And I think that's what you're getting. My worries with him is similar to the worries about DeAndre Swift is that he freelances a lot. I, I do not like him in a zone scheme whatsoever. I, I think he's a guy that needs to go to like a gap power scheme to find read where he can just hit it and go because if not his pacing can be rough it, it, he's a guy that likes to dance more than he likes to one cut and go it's just the running style he is and at 220 pounds he doesn't utilize that size as much as i would like so when he's running between the tackles he's not a guy who's going to pick up tough yards you know they're pretty much every guy we're going to talk about above him on this list i would trust more in short yard situations than lloyd despite him being I think the second biggest back we're going to talk about here in this class. So doesn't use that size well, but definitely a guy that can see a ton of targets. Definitely a guy that can hit home runs in the running game as well. I was going to say, when I watched him, when I watched Marshawn Lloyd, like, and and then found out that he was 220 pounds, I, I, did, I was surprised. Yes. I did not think that this would be a 220 pound back, but that's when he showed up at the combine, ran really fast. Uh, I think four, four, six. Yeah, four four six, um, and pretty good receiving production. I don't know. I, I think he's got a place in the NFL. Yeah, consensus big board on him is low, one hundred and sixth overall. So I mean, there's a chance, like Renner said, some of these guys fall into day three. I think Renner probably thinks he should go on day two. It sounds like, but there's a chance that this guy falls into day three, the number six running back on Renner's big board. I'm going to butcher this guy's name and these Notre Dame freaks. And by the way, for those guys who don't know, both Renner and Silva are Notre Dame freaks. And perhaps that's why they have Audric Esteem. I'm sure I butchered that. Estime. Estime at number six overall on the big board. This dude ran a 4.71 at the running back position at the combine, then goes to his pro day and runs a four five six. And everybody, oh, it's okay. It's okay. You know, it, it, it is he, okay. He now he now he ran a four five six at the pro day where they juice everything. Anyways, anyways, Renner, go ahead on your Notre Dame Homer pick here at number six overall. Well, his jumps were great at the combine. It didn't make sense. So 38 inch vertical, 10 5 broad jump for a guy who's 221 pounds. And now we talk about Lloyd 220, one pound less. Otter estimate 221 shows up every time. He is a guy that will drag defenders. He is a power between the tackles, great vision, grind out tough yards. And he's young too. He's only 20 years old, not a ton to tread on the tires, really only became the guy for Notre Dame this past fall. So a lot to like in that regard. I think the NFL might like him or give him a path to success, uh, you know, give him more touches than, uh, you know, other than he's kind of getting hyped in the national media because he does so many of the little things well, and because he has that NFL translatable game with that size to really carry a heavier workload. I do worry that he's just like, he's not particularly dynamic. Um, not necessarily like the four seven speed because he had some long runs on tape, but he's not a make you miss guy, a complete opposite back of Marshawn Lloyd in that you're not going to throw him the ball out in space. You're not going to, you know, utilize that aspect to the running back position. He is just a pure runner first that, you know, can, depending on the situation, I think produce, and I think it's still break tackles. He has long arms, has a good stiff arm on tape. I think he's a guy who can, if he continues to get stronger, continues to, you know, mature as still a young back, I think he could lock down a starting role in time. But 
but just going to be, you know, limited in the scope of the impact he makes the next level. Um, a, a 220 plus pound running back who runs like it yep. and also like had a lot of long runs. So, I mean, I would just say that he plays a lot faster than that four, seven, one. And I think he plays a lot closer to the four five, four. So that, that's why I'm buying in. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes dudes have a bad day. You know, everybody has a bad day every, every once in a while. It just so happened that this occurred. And, and like Renner said, like his other athletic marks were, were really, were really strong. It's just, and I, I, I think that he's an outside zone runner, um, ideally. And I, I think he could be a starter. The biggest question for me is the passing game. Is it, you know, I mean, he had 26 catches in his career. Um, is this something that he can uh, improve upon or, you know, just with more opportunities? Or is just is this just not in his bag? I mean, they played four running backs this past year. Like Notre Dame was loaded in the backfield. The crazy thing is, he's actually even lower in the consensus big boards than Marshawn Lloyd, 110 overall. I'm curious, Renner. Well, like, that's because everybody freaked out when he ran the 471. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I, I am curious, though, Renner, if you have like a macro take on running back. Do you think that? Because um, my take is that this is actually systemic. In other words, young people who are incredible athletes used to play the running back position, now don't want to play the running back position because they see these guys don't get paid and have these absurd injury rates and short NFL careers. I mean, if I had a kid who was some insane athlete and he was 10 years old, I would say, no way, do not put him at running back. Put him at wide receiver. And do you think that's one of the reasons we're getting these really poor running back classes? Or do you think this is just an outlier bad running back class? Well, I think it's actually even more than it's seven on seven. It, it, the running backs in a seven on seven is all you do over the course of spring, summer as a high school, middle school athlete. And so if you want to be involved in that, you got to play wide receiver, right? You can't play the running backs aren't getting handoffs in seven well, on seven. Well, it's you, all you, passing. You, you want your kid playing quarterback. Right? Yeah, that's it. Right. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Come on. <laughs> One more guy that I think is in this kind of clump and tier below we get before we get to the actual good prospects or the actual big time fantasy prospects at least fifth overall for Renner at the running back position is Ray Davis out of Kentucky only five foot eight but 211 pounds ran a four five two the stuff that I've seen on him is he can play third down and he can be a third down back for you what do you think about pigeon pigeonholing Ray Davis there Renner and any other thoughts on his outlook yeah so I think you hit the nail on the head in terms of there's a big tier. There's four backs in this class that you want. After that, it's like maybe a guy can play a role for you. So we'll get to those four in a second. But Davis, to me, he's why I put him ahead of Estimate and why I put him ahead of Lloyd. I think he's the most complete of this group. He doesn't have a lot of weaknesses, but he also doesn't have a lot of high end. You know, He's not a high end athlete. He's not particularly impressive in one regard, not a high end tackle breaker, not high end speed, solid, not spectacular size. So just kind of ticks a lot of boxes for the position. On the older end as well, I think he's a fifth-year guy coming out. Spent a lot, spent time, started with Vanderbilt before uh, transferring to Kentucky this past fall. But well built, you know, he's shorter but not small. You know, in the two fifteen to two twenty range uh, is what he you know, came to the combine and the Senior Bowl at, and has some juking, you know, has some shiftiness to his game, and also has very natural hands. He wasn't featured much in any uh, stop, but I think at the Senior Bowl catching the ball, he was probably the most impressive just in terms of adjusting it looking easy for him of any of the guys down there. So also can blitz pick up. I thought he was one of the best in terms of recognizing blitzes, picking those up, his agility to you know work across formation, get a DB, very impressive in that regard. So a, a guy that a lot of coaches will like in their room, not necessarily a guy who's going to get 200 carries a, a year at the next level. Yeah, sounds like a role player for sure. Evan, any thoughts on Ray Davis out of Kentucky? 86 catches. Fine athleticism, four five two, nine foot eleven broad jump. Um, I, you know, I I think yeah, I, I think he's a role player in the NFL. You know, maybe maybe nine to to twelve touches a game. All right, these next four backs I have seen in all different orders. I mean, and even the betting market. You know, there's obviously the betting market odds to be the first running back selected. That market has been all over the place, also, and certainly not a consensus favorite there. Fourth on Renner's. Running back big board is Jalen Wright out of Tennessee, 5'10, 215, with 4'38 speed and a 38 inch vertical. I mean, 
This dude is an athlete. 7.4 yards per carry last season. I believe was second in all of FBS for Jalen Wright. Strikes me as one of the better, at least on paper, profiles athletically in this class. Renner, what do you think about Jalen Wright and why do you have him at the back of this clump here? Yeah, his strengths, you can basically read off of his combine page, right? Yeah. That, that is who he is. He is the most impressive athlete at the running back position in this class. It, it, whether it's not only, you know, the size, speed, explosiveness, but also like he breaks a lot of tackles too in space. Like if you get them the ball in space, he is the one guy I would want over anyone else in this class. Good hands too, only two drops his entire career. So he can be throwing the ball in that regard. I'm not sure we haven't seen enough of him to know like can he run routes that sort of thing i think that gets overblown though and not necessarily utilized it's very much situational at the nfl level what a guy factors into in terms of the passing game but the athleticism it's all there like truly if a guy turns into like the best running back in the nfl from this class i, I would bet it's him like not saying anyone will I, I don't think anyone will it's not a great class but like he has that sort of ceiling it's just tennessee's offense was a joke for evaluating running backs he is running one to two concepts against light boxes and not even like given sort of rules as a runner about how to execute them. Like he can immediately abandon the rushing concept if he sees daylight and just, it was just a freelancing fest on tape. So there's really not much to take away from that in terms of how he'll fare. And I think there were some bad habits that he has also on tape that I'm very worried about. His pass protection was not exceptional. He attacks high not very sort of forceful when he wanted to. It's just something that he needs more reps on and we'll see how he develops in that regard. And then also five fumbles on only 282 carries the past two seasons could play a factor in how much of a workload he gets in the NFL level. So definitely the biggest boomer bust running back in this class, but the high end talent is, it's really dang good. Yeah. Never had more than 146 carries in an individual season um that that came out to about 11 carries a game i wonder if that's a reflection of the pass protection and and the, the ball security yeah you know because i mean this guy obviously has dynamic traits and like kevin cole has done a really good job of, of showing that actually athleticism more so than production at the running back position is predictive for nfl success at wide receiver the athleticism is much less predictive the production is predictive but at running back you want athletes and that's this dude it, it's a little disappointing it's, it's just like you know it makes you wonder like what what was going on there why was he not getting the rock more yeah i i'm interested in jalen wright for sure just based on the athleticism that we've talked about here i did see that uh landis line had a melvin gordon comp on jalen wright i know renner went with lamar miller as his comp but yeah i mean those are pretty solid decent comps athletic dudes who ended up being NFL starters. Let's go to number three on Renner's big board. This is the, probably the most controversial one. To me, the most interesting one in this class, Jonathan Brooks out of Texas. Now six foot, 216, played behind Bijan Robinson and Roshan for a bit in Texas. This past season, he's having an awesome year, but then tears his ACL in November. Ends up with just 238 career NCAA carries. ACL tear is obviously bad. I'm not sure that like a low workload in college is really bad considering you know we understand he wasn't going to play ahead of Bijan robinson he probably was going to play ahead of roshan johnson either so if he had never torn his acl i kind of think this guy would be consensus number one on people's boards i don't know if that's true or not though ren or any thoughts on that and anything else on jonathan brooks i can say he would have been number one on my board i think he is the most polished runner or just the most impressive runner in this class in terms of just like his vision's great his creativity is great. He runs hard, even if he's not particularly big for the position. Um, and truthfully, like I, I like these top three backs. That's the only reason I dropped them down to three is because I think these three backs that we're going to talk about are starters at the next level. How high end will they be? That's up for debate, but I think they are all starting caliber backs at the NFL level. But with him, he's just the, the comp I had for him was. Uh, Melvin Gordon. I just think he is, you know, Melvin Gordon was just an all around smooth back that just can catch the ball of the backfield, can run between the tackles, can make big plays out in space. Uh, and the thing I like about Brooks is he's still young. He's only 20 years old. So truly a guy who at best football hopefully is ahead of him. But the ACL, it's like if that's costing you one year of a rookie deal with kind of how valuable running backs are, 
I'd probably lean towards other guys on this list, the top two guys on this list before him. I mean, people are saying, Evan, that the Cowboys are interested and the Cowboys have a massive hole at running back. But yeah, Evan, any thoughts on Jonathan Brooks here? Um, yeah, so um, our buddy Lance Zierlein compared him to Jamal Charles, which, I mean, Jamal Charles should be in the Hall of Fame, actually. Which everyone caught Melvin Gordon to Jamal Charles. Yeah. I, I was awesome. just going to say that too. <laughs> and I think it was because of the dreads. But yeah. um <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, I don't, I don't know. Coming off the ACL is a little bit scary. I've heard Dane Brugler suggest that uh, the Cowboys late in the second round yeah. could look at Jonathan Brooks. The Cowboys, like, their they're number one back right now is Rico Dowdle. Correct. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's getting a lot of buzz. And also Jalen Wright's getting some buzz to the Cowboys as well. But there are some awesome landing spots for fantasy. And given the way that ACL recoveries have gone lately, I'm not, like, Five or 10 years ago, I would have just thrown this guy out. Like he tore his ACL in November. It, you know, I'm not going to mess with this. But now these guys start coming back in like seven, eight months and actually look pretty good. So I would not rule out Jonathan Brooks reaching his peak despite the ACL tear. Number two on Renner's big board is going to raise some eyebrows. I think most people have Blake Corum further back in their ranks. But number two overall among running backs for Renner is Blake Corum out of Michigan. Everybody saw him during Michigan's national title run 5'8", 205, 4, 5, 3 speed. Shown ability to handle huge workloads. Scored 27 touchdowns last year alone for the Michigan Wolverines. Renner, why have Blake Corum here at number two overall on your board? I just think he has such an NFL translatable game. And I, I think NFL sort of evaluators or just like coaches are going to love this guy in their building. Kind of the same way Jim Harbaugh did and kind of built that whole offense around him this past year. And that's why, you know, he could have come out as a junior and he came back because he wanted to win a national championship there for Michigan. And it's truthfully, his stock would have been higher because his junior year tape, in my opinion, was better. But this past year, what I liked was, you know, 4.8 yards per carry doesn't sound great, but it was an NFL 4.8 yards per carry. It was eight man boxes, heavy fronts, that he had to go through a tight hole to pick up three yards on a third and two. And he was doing that consistently. Like he does those things at a really high level. He's going to maximize all those sort of ugly runs that, you know, aren't necessarily like great for like fantasy relevance, but get you touches on the football field because NFL coaches care about that stuff. So I think super reliable in that regard. And then he's also the best pass protecting back in this class, you know, at that size, he may be short at five, eight, but two Oh five, he is built. Uh, like a brick, like he is well built. You saw the 27 bench press reps at the combine. And so he takes on guys in the hole, takes on linebackers, has good vision to work across the formation. Uh, and he's a fantastic pass protector, which will get him time early on. Uh, solid receiver out of the backfield, but you're not going to do much more than just check downs in terms of like solid hands. But he's not a guy you're going to really, you know, go to bat for his receiving ability. But, you know, not not the most explosive dude, not the most sort of uh, impressive in the open field. But you're in a 6 2 three cone, a really good time. And that shows his cutting ability, his ability to, uh, you know, really hit the hole at top speed when he wants to, when he puts his foot in the ground. So my comp for him is Devontae Freeman. Yeah. And, and I think that's kind of where you could get as a guy who could just start for a long time. Maybe he's never elite, but as a guy who can – carry a big workload uh, in any way, shape, and form, and NFL coaches, I think, will love. You hear people talk about it. They, they'll be like, well, he's just not, not you know, he's, he's really good at football, You're, you know, really natural runner, but just, you know, not a very good athlete. And actually, his athleticism is actually, I mean, it's better than Devontae Freeman's was. Yeah. Um, it's better than Kyron Williams was. Four, five, three, and a six, eight, two, three-cone drill. And, and and he can pass protect. Like I don't I don't know what the odds are right now. I'm gonna look at this uh, after the show for uh, the first running back drafted. But I mean I think he's got as good of a chance as as anybody. Right? Um. So I think Blake Corum is gonna go a little bit earlier than Devontae Freeman went. Devontae Freeman went in round four. Blake Corum's probably gonna go late round two or round three. But as Mike was describing Blake Corum's game, I was actually thinking of Devontae Freeman because five foot eight but really good in pass protection is not normally what you get, but that's, I think, what you get from both of these guys and coaches certainly, certainly love it. You, Cl Clyde Edwards-Hilaire sort of had yeah. a, a similar profile to this, and I mean, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire has not been an NFL success, so we, we, we know that now, 
with the benefit of hindsight, but he wound up going early, a lot earlier than a lot of people thought. You remember we had him as first running back drafted at like 25 to one, mm-hmm. man, it, it, it was nice to be rich back then. All right. Just pause this. Also, I think tested better than Clyde Edwards Slayer to come out. If that's like any drum roll, please for the number one running back on Mike Renner's big board in the 2024 class. It is Trey Benson out of Florida state, six feet tall, 216 pounds, you know, kind of prototypical big size with athleticism shared a bunch of time at Florida state, but did run a four, three, nine at the combine again at six foot tall, two sixteen. So certainly has the top end speed Renner. Why Trey Benson ahead of the pack here at number one overall. I think he kind of blends a nice mix of high end potential and also on field productivity and like NFL translatability. I think he has much better vision than Jalen Wright in like a close enough athlete to Jalen Wright. Like he is 439 at 216 pounds with, you know, I think the best broken tackle rate of any back in this class over his career. Now he's also a guy who's coming back from, I think his freshman year at Oregon had one of the most gruesome knee injuries. You know, he had a full blow, knee blowout dislocation. So kind of like the Nick Chubb had to work all the way back from to where he's still probably like getting back to full strength from that. And then obviously he's going to be on like evaluators in terms of like how long that knee has to last. But I see a guy who has unique sort of balance for a guy with high end athleticism too. He, he, he can in the open field kind of take away a leg from a defender and spin or juke them or just has a number of ways to win. He can lower a shoulder and really run through someone. So there's just really, he kind of has everything you could want for the running back position. I, I, the one thing I am a little worried about is I'd probably like him to go to more to a gap scheme. He can get tentative when he has muddy uh, sort of blocking in front of him in the floor state that was kind of common on his tape. It was not a good offensive line that he was running behind. So I'd like him get more defined gaps that he can just like let that athleticism rip. But that's probably the biggest knock on him. I'm a big fan of his. I have him as a borderline top 50 player, and I obviously don't love running backs much on my big board. So I, I think pretty highly of what he can do at the next level. 439 at 216. That, that's a really nice speed score. Do, do you think that he um, – what, what are your thoughts of him uh, in the passing game? I mean, he didn't have a ton of receiving production, he had a, but he had a, a real nice – uh, yards per reception. Yeah, I don't think his hands are like great. Like you're not featuring him, but screen space, really, like he, he is awesome in space. And so like he, he is a guy that I think is good enough in terms of what he can do and that you're going to want to throw him swings. You're going to want to throw him check downs. Like you want to get him involved in that regard. Yeah. And I thought the DeMarco Murray comp that you had was a good one for a guy who is relatively tall for the running back position, but has that really big, long speed like we saw with DeMarco Murray found the odds here odds to be the first running back off the board in this class. Trey Benson is the favorite at plus 160. Jonathan Brooks next at plus 225. Jalen Wright plus 300 and then Blake Corum six to one. So yes, the market is not expecting Blake Corum to be the first running back off the board. I see Evan is logging into his DK account right now to fire that one off. Is there any running backs that we didn't mention here? Mike, that you think fantasy players should be aware of because there are annually late round running backs that have an impact on fantasy due to the volume of injuries and due to the difference between these guys between a fifth round pick and a third round pick really typically not being that great. Yeah, the one intriguing guy that I'll mention, this class has an Antonio Gibson in it and it's Tyrone Tracy, Purdue running back, five years at wide receiver between Iowa and Purdue, changes to running back his final year. His running back tape was good, man. He he is dynamic with the ball in his hands. Now it's obviously looks, he still looked like, you know, a wide receiver playing running back, still not polished in that regard, but four, four, eight, 40, 40 inch vertical, six, eight, one, three cone at five, 11, two Oh nine. Like there is talent there to work with. So, you know, everyone was kind of like, Oh, everyone's favorite late round sleeper was Antonio Gibson. Then he goes top of the third round. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Tyrone Tracy sneaks into the third round himself because of that. Yeah. And, and, Big board consensus has him really low, 167 overall, you know, behind guys like Will Shipley and uh, Marquise Irving, Braylon Allen. I mean, they have Tyron Tracy behind all those guys. From a fantasy perspective, Tracy seems like a better prospect to me than those guys, but yeah. All right. That is going to do it 
for our look at this running back class. We'll be back for the final episode of this series, Tight Ends, Mr. Brock Bowers coming up next. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube. Be sure you're following all of us on Twitter at Evan Silva, all one word, at Adam Levitan, all one word, at Mike Renner underscore. For Renner, for Silva, for producer Luke, for producer Ryan, I'm Adam. Good luck, everybody.